Long overdue, man. Long overdue. But here we are, guys and gals. My top five favorite TV shows and miniseries from 2019. Five TV shows and miniseries which yours truly loves so much. I do, guys and gals. And these five miniseries and TV shows, two of which are miniseries, and the other three are TV shows which I do love and, of course, admire for their storytellings and artistries, among other other reasons as to why these shows are so good, maybe not perfect, but still very good. And without further ado, guys and gals, here are my top five favorite TV shows and miniseries from 2019. No one in the room that night knew the shutdown button could act as a detonator. They didn't know it because it was kept from them. Comrade Legasov, you're contradicting your own testimony in Vienna. My testimony in Vienna was a lie. I lied to the world. I'm not the only one who kept the secrets. There are many who were following orders from the KGB, from the Central Committee, and right now there are 16 reactors in the Soviet Union with the same fatal flaw. Three of them are still running less than 20 kilometers away at Chernobyl. Professor Legasov, if you mean to suggest the Soviet state is somehow responsible for what happened, then I must warn you, you are treading on dangerous ground. I've already trod on dangerous ground. We're on dangerous ground right now because of our secrets and our lies. They're practically what define us. When the truth offends, we, we lie and lie until we can no longer remember. It is even there, but it is still there. Every lie we tell incurs a debt to the truth. Sooner or later, that debt is paid. At number five, we have Craig Mazin's Chernobyl. Chernobyl tells the horrific and tragic tale of the Chernobyl disaster, which took place in Ukraine back when Ukraine was part of the Russian Soviet Union until the Chernobyl disaster led to the end of the Soviet Union, and thus Ukraine became its own independent nation. But this disaster, guys and gals, was a huge embarrassment, and of course, it exposed is the government of Ukraine and the Soviet Union back then, their incompetence, and of course how fucking stupid they were. This disaster, guys and gals, could have been prevented, which also includes the radiation which spread across all of Ukraine and other parts in Europe. This miniseries tells the story of these men and women who fought hard to ensure that said radiation does not spread, but also those who fought against the government who tried to cover this up and save their own asses. It's fucking disgusting guys and gals how these men these men in suits could think more about themselves instead of their people who are supposed to be their responsibility and nothing else. But hey guys and gals politics and that's exactly what this TV show, this miniseries explores the politics and incompetence of the Ukrainian government and just how horrifying the Chernobyl disaster truly was. The story, performances, cinematography, and so many other great qualities of this miniseries were all so good, and that's why it ranks at number five. Huh? Oh, honeybee. Oh, I found your note. Okay. Listen to me, baby. Mm -hmm. I'm not a baby. No, I know. I know. I just always will see you with my little girl. But you're all grown up. <laughs> oh, I can see that. I am. I am. I know. You're punishing me. And maybe I deserve it. And I'm so sorry, baby. I would do anything for you. I would love you more than anything in the whole world. I would give up anything for you. I have given up everything for you. I know. Come on, come on, let's go home. Listen, Mom. I want to stay with Scott. Oh, I know you do. I know. Oh, believe me. I know. That's why. Come on. That's why I need you to go home with me. I'm not going to make you stop seeing your friend. I promise you. This is 
is not how you do it. At number four, we have Nicholas J. and Tosca and Erin Michelle Dean's miniseries, The Act, which tells the true story of Dee Dee and Gypsy Blanchard and how the latter would eventually kill her beloved mother alongside her boyfriend, her then boyfriend, Nick God John. And this tale, guys and gals, while tragic, was so well told and so awesome, especially in regards to the performances of both Patricia Arquette and and of course, my gal, my woman, Joey King, who I love so much. And Joey King, guys and gals, she owns this series. She was so damn great, as were the other people who starred in this miniseries. I could not sympathize with Gypsy Blanchard any more than I did watching this miniseries. And based on what we've seen in this miniseries, while dramatized, tells the actual tale of Gypsy Blanchard and the abuse she had endured at the hands of her so called beloved mother and best friend because my god guys and gals Dee Dee Blanchard deep down I do think that she did love her daughter her actions told me differently as it did others but who knows exactly what she felt other than her daughter Gypsy Blanchard who is still serving time in prison and whether or not Gypsy Blanchard deserves it which yours truly believes she doesn't I don't guys and gals but regardless this tale is so tragic yet also fascinating as all hell and once again the performances of both Patricia Arquette and Joey King are what made this series so great and that's why it ranks at number four At number three, we have Steve Blackman's The Umbrella Academy. Every time I say that name, guys and gals, yours truly cannot help but think about The Umbrella Corporation from Resident Evil, the Biohazard series, the survival horror zombie series, which I love so much, but damn, The Umbrella Corporation in that franchise were the baddies, the main bad guys. This series, this awesome TV show created by Mr. Blackman reminds me so much much of them in regards to the name alone but the Umbrella Academy is based on a comic book series of the same name which yours truly has not read but I am interested in doing so because this series was so great and so awesome especially in regards to the tale told the performances by all the actors especially Ellen Page who's also my woman I love her so damn much I do Ellen Page is the driving force of this series if you ask me as Vanya Hargreaves. Vanya Hargreaves is so awesome and someone who yours truly can personally relate to, especially considering what she goes through, what I have went through in my past life and what made me into the man I am now, just like what made her into the woman she would become. A rebel at heart is what we are. This TV show in general was pretty good, not perfect, but still very good and something which yours truly in enjoyed so much and was recommended to yours truly by Angelina Young or simply Angelina is a YouTuber on YouTube who talks about K-pop and K-pop related topics and I do recommend you guys and gals check out her channel the link of which will be down below in the description box but this TV show was so good that's why it ranks at number three I came here thinking I would kill her and then I saw you why did you stop me? I would have not had that on your soul. She bought you a poxy pair of shoes. That was all you're worth. I curse myself for telling you. I'm selfish to speak of it. She took you when you were just a child. And I did as much to you. I'm sorry. At 
number two, we have Alison Newman and Moira Buffoonies Harlots, Harlots of which has ended, sadly. But this TV show as a whole, all three seasons were so damn good. And this final chapter was a fitting conclusion. Not perfect, but still great and still awesome. Samantha Morton, Leslie Manville, and of course, Jessica Brown, Findlay, and the other cast members in this awesome TV show, Harlots, all of them were so damn good. They were guys and gals, and the story told was so damn great. I loved it so much. This show is so great and explores all of that topic, the politics and economics that comes with being a harlot in this time. It was so well written, so well performed, especially by Samantha Morton, who I fucking love, love, love so much. I love her guys and gals and her laughter. My god, guys and gals. If I met a woman like her, I would be the luckiest son of a bitch in the world. I would, guys and gals. Samantha Morton is my lady of ladies. I love her so much. I do. Her laughter and, of course, her anger. It's so fucking hot. I love that shit. I do. Damn right. But that's why Harlot Season 3 ranks at number 2. And finally, guys and gals, at number one, we have Lauren Schmidt, His Ricks, The Witcher series, based on the fantasy adventure novel of the same name, written by author Andre Sofkowski. This TV series, guys and gals, the first season of The Witcher series, it's not perfect by any means, but still very good. The music, the performances by all the actors, especially Henry Cavill as the White Wolf himself, Geralt of Rivia, the setting the costumes, the action, and of course, the war slash battle scenes. All of them were so damn great, so damn great, and so damn epic in scale. It was, guys and gals. This TV show does have a few problems. Two problems in particular comes in the way some characters are portrayed and casted. The actors of who they cast as, Triss Marigold and Fringilla, both of them are portrayed by two women of color, which is okay in some other series But in this series, a Witcher adaptation, it's not right if you ask me. Because Triss Marigold in the novel was described as being fair skin and of course having red hair or fiery hair. And Fringilla, this iteration of Fringilla is so far from being Fringilla from the novel. The Fringilla of the novel is much better and real. But the actress, regardless, was still good as was the actress who played Triss Marigold and the second problem I have with this TV show, the first season of the Witcher series is Julian Albert Pankratz, otherwise known as Jaskier. I could not stand him one bit. This guy is a big mouth, but compared to his video game counterpart, he is much better and speaks with an actual English accent. But regardless of those two issues I have, it was so damn good and so well adapted. It was, guys and gals, and I cannot wait to 
see the second season of the Witcher series and whatever comes next for the White Wolf, Geralt of Rivia and his beloved horse and companion, Roach. And that's why the first season of the Witcher series ranks at number one. Thank you guys and gals for watching. That was my top five favorite TV shows and miniseries from 2019. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe if you wish and do check out my gaming channel where I do Let's Play series, gaming content and so much more. Until next time, peace out, take care, adios amigos, au revoir and sayonara.